Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I wanted to give you guys an update on my Christmas tree top ball rack. And I released a video a few months ago where I went over how I built this rack. And I've gotten a lot of positive comments from you guys. A lot of people out there are interested in building this rack. So I thought I'd update you with some comments that I have now that I'm actually using it, as well as you know, show you how I set it up. So I built this rack last fall and it actually sat unoccupied for a few months. I was just waiting for my boas to finish their winter cooling so they would, you know, they're back at the normal temperatures before I can bring them in here. And I added these snakes a few weeks ago. And so I've added uh, five snakes. I've got two hog island boas, two pearl island boas, and a long tail boa in here. Um, this particular rack is six shelves. And you can see the top shelf is unoccupied since I only have five of these tubs. I meant to pick one up this Christmas season. I actually went up to my nearest Walmart, which is about an hour away, back around Thanksgiving, and they didn't have the tubs yet. Unfortunately, I never made it back. So you can see I'm using the top shelf just for storage at this point. So you can see this is a pretty big rack. You know, the overall dimensions of this rack are 55 inches wide, by 22 inches deep and it's 81 inches tall which is about six feet nine inches so it takes up a pretty big footprint in my snake room and as I mentioned I went over the detailed construction of this rack earlier so check out my earlier video if you want the exact details of how I put this thing together because the rack is actually too big for my wide-angle lens to take in I thought I'd just do a panning shot from the top down just showing you what this rack looks like you can see I have a stool there so I can reach the top shelf. But it's got a total of five tubs with room for one more tub on the top shelf if I ever pick up a sixth tub. Although I may actually just leave this as a shelf for storage because it's kind of hard to access that top shelf. I need to use the, the stool, you know. And I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy, but you know, I need the stool to get up to that top shelf. I went ahead and I opened one of the tubs, you know, I slid it out. I just want to give you a tour of the inside of the rack or inside of each uh, tub in the rack. And you can see I've used a coconut husk substrate at the bottom. This stuff really holds a nice humidity. And then you can see just how long these tubs are. They allow, you know, a medium sized boa to pretty much stretch out entirely. You can see I have a water dish at one end. This is a uh, a bark from um, cork bark it's a hiding place and then I have this hiding place I made out of an oil pan of course it wasn't used for oil you can see the snake is hiding that's over the hot spot and you can see nice female longicata there this girl's about five years old or so hopefully should be in the breeding lineup for next year but you know it seems to work pretty well the snakes seem to be pretty comfortable in this setup they got this nice hot spot on this one end um, it gives them you know pretty good space I can see it's not terribly wide but it's quite long so it's a little bit different from the boa racks I use in my vision uh, boa the vision boa tubs I use in my my main racks which are 40 by 30 inches long uh, but you know it's another option you know these tubs are relatively inexpensive so if you have them available it might be a good thing to consider uh, to build for your snakes now that I have this tub slid out I just want to show you the heating setup and I'm using these ultra therm under the tank heaters these are the 11 by 23 inch size you can see I have this one uh, taped down with aluminum foil tape one consideration you have to make is you need to have space on the end that's not under the tub where you can mount the probe for the thermostat and I'm using a Herbstat 6 by the way because you can't mount this underneath the tub because there's not enough clearance so you need that little bit of extra space and I'll just show you on one of the top shelves so you can see here this is the tub and there's about a couple inches at the end where I have the probe for the thermostat because it doesn't fit underneath. Um, that's one of the disadvantages with this setup. The other one is that there's, you can see there's some space between the heater and the bottom of the tub and these tubs aren't flat on the bottom. They have kind of a groove uh, texture. So you actually have to typically turn the thermostat higher 
than what you want the hot spot to be. And I believe I have the thermostat right now, you know, somewhere around uh, 95 degrees or so. And my hot spot is about 90, 91 degrees. So because there's a loss of heat uh, because of that space. As far as my thermostat setup, I'm actually using two channels of the Herbstat 6 to control these five levels. So I basically have three of the heat pads plugged into an extension cord with three plugs that I have in one channel, and then I have two of them plugged into another. So that way I can use two channels of the Herbstat to control the whole rack. And this has worked okay. Um, I, you know, I carefully check the hot spot with my infrared temperature gun just to make sure that it's in the desired range. And I have, haven't had a problem keeping the desired range this way. But if you find that the temperatures vary too much from the optimal, you know, 89 to 91 degrees or so, you may want to use a separate thermostat probe for each individual shelf. And so with this particular rack, I still haven't worked out all the bugs. My main challenge is that there's this tendency for the tubs to bind up when I try to slide them out. And let me demonstrate. So there's plenty of clearance between the shelf and the tub. There's probably about, you know, at least an eighth of an inch or so. But when you pull the tub, this one, this shelf's not as bad, but because of the flexibility, the back shelf tends to bind up. You know, so if you don't have the exact right clearance, it's got to be enough clearance so it doesn't bind up, but not too much so that your snake escapes, it binds up. And I found that some of the shelves are worse than others. This shelf is actually not that bad. But then when you push it back, you see it's pushing but now bound up. So the, this actually flexes in the back and it actually creates friction and it binds up and it's you know, kind of a pain. I'm trying to figure out ways of maneuvering it to get around. You know, I found that I can stick my hand and push like this from the back. But of course, you know, there's a snake in there. It might not be the best thing to do. Um, you can see it's bound up. But if I go to the back and kind of inch it in like this, it, that works okay. And again, I found some of the shelves, like this top shelf, there's not as much clearance, so it binds up more. So I'm going to figure it out when I get a chance and just adjust the height of the shelves so the binding up isn't as much of a problem. And I think it's inherent with these tubs because it's a thinner, more flexible plastic. My main boa racks with the Vision tubs is a much thicker plastic. It doesn't flex at all and you can just slide it in nicely in and out. Another potential concern, because it's flexible, you wonder if a snake can just push its head out. You know, and I've been monitoring, monitoring the snakes really closely. I haven't seen any signs of snakes trying to escape, but you know, that's definitely a concern with this rack and I'm really, you know, keeping my eyes on it. One other idea that I've had to get around this issue with the tubs binding up is to build it so the tubs actually slide out the long way. So basically I would have this part here, you know, the side beams to hold it up, and then you could pull the tubs out this way. And I don't think it would bind up as much, but that really presents a challenge because you can see these tubs are almost five feet long. So just to pull it out, you would need an additional five feet. So you need this huge space just to pull it out and push it back in. You know, if you have the space, by all means go for it. But I think that's definitely a problem. And you know, for most people, pulling it out this way is gonna be a lot more practical. So if you're building a rack and you decided to build it with so the tubs pull out like that, please let me know. I'd like to hear, you know, what kind of success you have. And of course, if you're building it this way, let me know, let me know tips you have. It'd be great to share with our community here about how you built your Christmas tree tub rack. So those are my initial thoughts on this Christmas tree tub rack. You know, maybe I'll feel differently six months or a year from now. I'm probably not planning on building any more of these just because I really do prefer the Vision Boa tubs to these tubs and also because I don't have the floor space right now for another rack like this. If I was going to build it again, I might also only limit it to five shelves, you know, which I'm only having the five tubs. But, you know, the nice shelf, this extra shelf up here is always nice for storage. And again, if you want the details on how to build this rack, here's a link that you can go to to check out that video. I thought I'd get out a snake because we haven't really looked at any snakes in this video. Well, other than this one, I showed you her in the new rack. 
this is my uh, roughly five-year-old female longicata. You know, real beautiful animal, my favorite longicata boa that I have. You know, she's just really developed really nicely and, you know, darkening up really nicely over time. But also this beautiful contrast between the black and the cream and the yellow markings. And her face markings are just gorgeous, really dark facial markings. But just overall, a really lovely animal. Real nice disposition, you know, a pleasure to handle, not aggressive at all, you know, not squeezy, she doesn't try to get away. Just a really cool laid back boa, the boa constrictor longicana, the long tail boa from the tombs region of Peru. So I hope this video was helpful and remember to share your rack pictures with me if you do build one of these racks. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.